Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Excellencies, distinguished guests, dear friends and colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's my honor to address you today on behalf of my country, the Republic of Yemen. I would like to begin by thanking, thanking the National Council on our U.S.-Arab relations, especially my dear friend, Dr. John Doc Anthony, who's a real friend of Yemen, for organizing this important conference and gathering us to discuss the future of our countries and the future of our region. To start, I wish to exclaim to all of you here with the loudest voice and to the wider audience listening, the time has come to unite all our efforts to end this conflict in Yemen once and for all. The world cannot allow any longer for further destructions of Yemen and for the Houthis to prolong the conflict. We call upon the United Na States, the United Nations, and the entire international community to apply the absolute maximum pressure on, the, on all parties, all sides, but especially on the Iran-backed Houthis, so they will negotiate and they, uh, and they will carry out a lasting peace agreement. In recent months, the Iran-backed Houthis have increased their brutality and frequency of their attacks on the Yemeni civilian and in our neighbors in Saudi Arabia. The Houthis continue to ignore ceasefire agreement and the confidence building uh, measures agreed upon last December in Stockholm, Sweden. The Yemeni government has always responded positively to all UN-led peace talks and efforts and agreements. In Kuwait, in 2016, we stayed for more than 115 days. And we were ready to sign, at that time, a comprehensive peace agreement. But the Houthis reversed course at the last minute after Iran directed them to do so. We have maintained a spirit of good faith when negotiating with all UN special envoys including Mr. Martin Griffiths. In December 2015, 2018, almost uh, a year ago now, the Yemeni government met with the United Nations and the Houthis delegation in Stockholm to negotiate the uh, latest peace agreement. Since that time, the government of Yemen has faithfully committed to all aspects of our Stockholm uh, agreement. Yet, the Houthis have violated this agreement thousands of times, and they continued to violate it, uh, you know, uh, all its aspects, despite of the warnings uh, uh, from the UN and the Arab coalition. Furthermore, the Houthis have undertaken numerous prison uh, ho uh, hostile against the United Nations, the Arab coalition, and the Yemeni government, and the people of Yemen since the signing of Stockholm Agreement. Nevertheless, the, least, the opportunity of peace is still at the reach of our hands. The government of Yemen is as ready as it has been since the start of this conflict to forge a peaceful and political solution with the Houthis. Dear friends and colleagues, there are three principal challenges facing the government of Yemen and the security of the country. First, the Iran-backed Houthis, whose persistence has delayed achieving uh, a lasting peace settlement. We have seen their dispositive tactics many times over the years, pretending to commit to peace negotiation and then withdrawing from their support to any initiatives. This harms not just the Yemeni people, but also the trust of every international actor who's trying to help us to resolve this conflict. Second, we must confront the presence of the terrorist group in Yemen, most notably the IQAB. These groups still pose a threat to the country, the region, 
and beyond that, they attempted to expand their reach from Yemeni's terrorists and plot terrorist action ahead, abroad, sorry. We cannot allow AKB to continue threatening the national security of countries in Middle East or national security of the United States of America. Third, the rise of the politically destabilization elements that has harmed the domestic cohesion of Yemen. Yemen is the strongest when all of its people work together to, uh, to, to achieve great things. We are close to resolving those other internal issues. And, we, uh, and, and now we are looking forward to work to establish a lasting peace in Aden. The key to achieving a peaceful political solution for, Yemeni, for Yemen lies in unity. And only together can we convert Houthis and make broader peace. Furthermore, I would like to thank the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, particularly for playing a leading role in resolving current domestic uh, disputes with internal parties by hosting peace, uh, peace talks in Jeddah and Riyadh. We believe that the, the, the Kingdom's intervention has remedied all outstanding issues and its impact will be truly conservative, uh, uh, fruitful to a long-term resolution to matters governing security, politically, and economic affairs. We hope, with the anticipated Jeddah Agreement, that all Yemeni's government institutions will return to Aden, including the presidency. We believe the new political uh, arrangement and the inclusion of more groups to the political landscape will give indeed weight to Yemen existing political structure, structure and the three references, the latter of which serves as essential foundation to achieve a secure and sustainable peace in Yemen. The government of Yemen is in a pursuit to, of peace, not prolonging, not prolonging the conflict. There are no winners in this conflict only lose for every Yemeni. The Houthis must, must be stopped planting landmines across Yemen. The Houthis must stop trying to brainwash our children through their campus and centers of, le of learning, where tens of thousands of Yemeni children are being taught to hate first their society and the West through their uh, sectarian ideology and anti-American, anti-Semitic, slogans. The time now to seek to the guidance of God to find peace. Now is not the time to twist our faith, religious history, and claim the divine right to rule Yemen. Dear friends, peace can be achieved. I also call upon those in DC, in Washington DC, to unite, to unite to end the conflict and apply maximum pressure on all sides to achieve that goal. The pressure must be placed robustly on the Iran-backed Houthis, as it has been always on the Yemeni government and the Arab coalition. The United States message to the Houthis must be strong and absolutely clear. The ambiguity to, towards the Houthis will not lead to peace at all. Several Recent congressional resolution have called for the total withdrawal of U.S. support for the Arab coalition in Yemen. This resolution comes from a place of politics, and we are wholly unrelated, and they are wholly unrelated to the actual situation in Yemen. No matter what your political leaning may be, we should all be in agreement that the Houthis cannot be allowed to continue harming Yemeni civilians and prolong the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. Iran cannot be allowed to succeed in its expansionist agenda on the, Arab, on the Arabian Peninsula, where it can threaten our shared allies and interests. My country is at turning points. Now, it's not the time for US to disengage 
and hope that the conflict resolve itself. We need the US and the entire international community to apply diplomatic and uh, uh, political pressure on the Houthis and their uh, backers in Tehran. That is the only way to get them to the negotiation table so we can find peaceful uh, political solution. Dear friend, despite of the difficulties of recent events, I still believe that the relationship between the United States, my country, and broader Middle East still has incredible potential. Indeed, the US-Arab relations requires deeper engagement from both sides. At this critical moment in history, the United States and the Arab world must not distance themselves from one another. Instead, we should be working more closely to address the critical issues such as Yemen's post-conflict challenges and the Iranian threat to the democracy and the global economy. Together, we can restore peace in Yemen and inshallah will be a resolution for all the conflicts in our region. I thank you.